So let me just hop over now and and get started. Uh, when you sign in to Validix, uh, it's going to look a little different if you haven't done this in the last couple months. This order fulfillment, or I'm sorry, market screen is is probably what you typically saw. Uh, now it's going to start with this map and the new uh, GIS overview. So it'll show the, the zones you've got based on your login, and you can hover over that uh, and see the, the zones highlighted. And then when you click on one of the zones, it'll zoom in. And if you've used the GIS tool to define areas, it'll have those there as well. Uh, you can click on that and get some statistics over here on the right. That'll show you your market groups and the number of properties. So that's what it's going to look like. Uh, this order fulfillment we just saw demonstrated yesterday. And so that's going to be how we'll find orders and, and take care of fulfilling orders in the, the coming months as they start to come in. Uh, the markets now, this is the, the traditional look. And so to get to this first question, let's kind of start at the end, how your market's going to look uh, when you're done, and then we'll kind of work back from there. So if I start here with my zone 631 and then just do a search with the default uh, parameters here, You'll see the screen, 37 markets found, uh, the market names over here, and then how Validix has sliced those up for us. Obviously, by size range, the gross living area, this style, and type fields. And then some information here in these two columns about the, the number of properties. And so these numbers, uh, what they mean, the first number on the left is the number that is modified live, and on the right, the total number of properties. The first column is for the, the primary group. That means the one that's named over here on the left. And then if you combine the properties, uh, market groups, uh, that will be this total properties over here. So this tells me this thing that I've got called custom homes uh, from 5,500 to 6,999 square feet uh, has 11 properties in it. And then there's six others from another market group that I've combined in there. So then the question is, how many properties do you need? How many market groups? And so what you need to think about going into setting up your market is that you don't want too many because each month you're going to need to go through and for each of these market groups look at the comparable sales, make adjustments, and, and tune it up. And so uh, if you had 20 or so in a zone, that's probably a manageable number. But then the question of what's the, the minimum number in any market group, uh, the answer is you've got to have enough properties in that market group so that you'll have sufficient sales to balance. And so my guidance is at least 200 properties. So if you can get a market group that has 200 properties, that's, that's the minimum. The way I came to that, I had seen a statistic that about 5% of homes sell nationally. So if you had 200 properties, you would say 10 of those should sell per year, five in a six month period, and that would give us enough to have, say, three to six comparable sales within the past six months that we could use. And so uh, if you target combining them so that you've got at least 200 properties, if that's possible, uh, that seems to me to be the reasonable number at the bottom end. And if you've got a fairly homogeneous area, uh, you can see down here at the bottom some of these, the Independence High School District, uh, 1300 to 1599. I've got 1800 properties in there. And that works pretty well. It, it balances pretty well. And so, uh, you know, the sales are tight enough that I can work with that size group. So when you're done with everything, you'll probably have 20 or so, maybe it's 15, maybe it's 30 uh, market groups. And let's say the majority of those will have enough 
properties in them that you can score them each month and have your zone modified live so that it's producing values for the majority of the properties. Uh, and I'm assuming that you have seen how to combine into the primary secondary, but I'll, let me just go ahead and show you that before we start on the ready tool. Uh, this hillside homes area, let's say I've decided that, uh, you know, they're all uh, similar enough here from 1,000 to, to 2,000 square feet that I want to combine all these. And I'm going to say there's 36 properties here, and so that's the biggest one, so I'll make that my primary. So I'll just do a quick walk through here. I'll click on this, and this will be a market group that it will bring up. And that's shown here in this green bar, Hillside Homes, 1600 to 1999, single family detached. And so the key button you want to use here is this combine. And so I'm going to click on that. And what this is showing me now is over here, available market groups. So these are ones that I could make a secondary group, meaning that they'll work with or be combined under. Validix will look for comps in those market groups as well as this primary one here. And so here I'm going to say I'll take this one. You can do these one at a time here, and that brings it over to the secondary market group, or you can use your control key to select. So if I decide I'm going to do this and say I wanted to put that one as well, then I can bring those over here. And so now it's combined these three secondary market groups under this primary one. So if I go back into my markets and search again, uh, this hasn't refreshed. There's It's still showing 37. And so I'll have to at least hit search. Sometimes you have to change it to a different zone. But OK, here, that did it. So that refreshed it. So now there's 34 instead of 37. And here on this line is the uh, primary market group, this Hillside Homes 1600 to 1999 that started with 36. And the total after you combine those secondaries in there is 102. Excuse me, I'm just going to clear my throat. So that's how it works to do the combining. And, and so you'll do that after you've set up the uh, the market groups and got the properties scored and then you'll put them together this way and then you'll be ready to go into the balancing and again I'll just kind of give you a quick intro here so you can see that uh, let's say I'm going to go down to one of my bigger ones and I want to balance it because I haven't done it since January 11th on this uh, zone so I'll click over here and this will take us to the balancing screen that you can see up there uh, in the address bar. And so what I'll be doing is looking at the red predicted value here versus the actual sales price and trying to get those as close as possible. Uh, it looks like there's a fairly big gap on a couple of these and so I may want to look at you know what are the conditions right now well in fact I can see a problem here I'm not sure how it originated but uh, the time adjustment uh, I think this was a typo I don't think 14 percent was accurate for this market it's probably closer to zero it's been about flat uh, so I'm going to show you how to change that here real quickly let's say that this is zero and as you do uh, this balancing monthly, you would go through and, and look at that. These values here for the, uh, the dollar weight uh, probably won't change much once you set them up. Uh, but each month, uh, Validix will sequence the sales by date of sale. The ones that are in blue with the gold star here are the comps I've selected. And so since I last did it in January, it's got January here in November. Let me scroll over to the right. Okay. 
and so this last blue one was from back in August. Then it starts over again with the ones that aren't currently comps, and so here's some March and February sales, which I probably would want to use, and so I can unselect one of these by clicking on the yellow star, and that will make it uh, not a comp, and do that here. And then for the ones that I do, I can click on this star to make it a comparable. The, the process would be that I'll open the MLS listing for this sale, look at it, and see if I really do like my score right now on view, location, site size, condition, and so on, make any changes that are appropriate there, and then save it. So that uh, allows us to better tune up the condition of the actual sales comps that Validix is using so we get better values on the rest of them. So that's how the, the process is going to look. And so you'll go through your zone each month, eliminate the old comps, look at some new ones, and put those in. Again, looking to the difference here between the red predicted value and the actual sales price and trying to get those as close as you can. So uh, this one looks pretty close. I'd probably need to investigate this one here to see if there was something with the uh, the condition or the terms of sale uh, that caused it to, to sell a little bit lower uh, than you'd look for the uh, for this market normally. So uh, Larry, what I'm going to do is send you the, the training documents. I'll send out that email here. And now we'll uh, switch back over and talk about the, the ready tool. But let me just stop at this point and ask if anybody's got any questions about we've, what we've covered so far or anything else they want to discuss before we hop over to the ready tool. Okay, so when you get ready to use the ready tool to to rough score your zone. Uh, in Validix here you'll go over to the import export tab and if you haven't been into Validix for a while the way the menus are set up you've got this top menu bar and then underneath it on the white line kind of the secondary menu. So these are your choices under markets. Uh, we'll click here under import export and it's set up to export which is what we want to do when we're done we'll click over here on import and and, and bring it back in so uh, the way you'll start uh, is on the export and I'll just walk through this real quick um, let's say that we're gonna work on zone 630 I'll select that here and click export I'm using Google Chrome and the way I've got it set up it'll uh, bring it down here in a little status box and uh, Zayo does recommend or actually mandate that we use Google Chrome. In particular, the mapping tool uh, has set up using Google Maps and using the, the Chrome tools. So with Internet Explorer, it uh, doesn't work right on the map tool, at least. Some of the other stuff will work OK. But for consistency and to avoid problems, uh, they recommend that everybody uses the, uh, the Google Chrome browser. So you'll want to do that. So now uh, the zip file, the compressed file, is here and I'll uh, show it in the folder and I'll bring that over here. So uh, it's downloaded on my computer and one of the things I cover in the introductory document is uh, just getting familiar with how to, to navigate on your computer to move files around and rename files um, I've got a folder uh, set up on my desktop and you can use your desktop or uh, any place else you'd like uh, as long as you just keep track of where things are at uh, called training XML file. So I'll open it here and I'm going to bring down this zip file that we just downloaded and put it here. Uh, and so then you'll unzip it. Uh, if you're using Windows 7, you can right-click and uh, send to. Oops. Actually, I think because I've got WinZip set up here, it's it's going to make me uh, 
open it up here in WinZip, which I'll do, and uh, we'll just pull it out there. Uh, I'll just drag it out. But in Windows 7, uh, I believe you can typically just send it right to the folder or extract it out. So, so that's how it's going to look when you bring the file down onto your desktop. Uh, I'm going to start today with this zone that I called uh, 630 RAW. This was one before I had scored it, and that's the one we'll open up in the, uh, the CAS tool and walk through the process here. And I've got the CAS or the Ready tool set up here as a shortcut, and I'll start that here, and then we'll open up this file and get started. So it uh, it normally takes a minute for it to load, and that's how this looks. Um, what I'm going to do as well is just pop back over here to the uh, file that I sent out to everybody. That's uh, called scoring a new zone, and uh, just show you that we're walking through this kind of step by step here. Um, the first part of this document I talk about deciding how uh, much you want to carve up your zone whether you need to use the GIS tool or not. Uh, step two is downloading the XML file that we just did. Uh, step three start the ready tool and so now we're at step four to browse and load and bring in the uh, the XML file. So let me pop back over here to the ready tool and so the the layout of the ready tool I'll shrink it down here just a little bit is like this the uh, first line is the file that you're gonna bring in and work on and we'll click the browse and load button to do that and then when we make some changes down here at the bottom we'll see that that'll be the the path and the name for the file that we're going to save it as and just kind of best practices we recommend that you uh, s rename the file so the changes you've made are in a different file so that if you discover a problem uh, you can go back and start over again with the the file that you originally downloaded so I'm gonna browse and load here and let's go to the desktop where I've got the folder called uh, the training XML file and now I'm going to open this up and so this is how the ready tool is going to look when you first open it uh, as I said up here it'll tell you the file that you've got open it shows you here 8,781 records and over here you see this filtered rows 8,781 and that's a number you're going to want to keep your eye on as you're using the tool because that tells you how many rows that you're going to work on or make changes in and when we start out we're going to make changes across the board to everything and so we'll just leave this at uh, 8781 once we've decided what we're going to make changes on, we go up here to the upper right where it says editing, and we'll use that area. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to mute everybody. I'm just getting a little bit of feedback. So go ahead and type in a, a message in the uh, chat box if you'd like to ask any questions as we go through this. Okay, so everybody's muted here. <clears throat> So let's start with the first field that I talked about, which was market name. So when you go into a zone, if it's fairly homogenous, uh, you may want to just use one market name initially and then let Validix do its thing to slice and dice it by the size range, by the, the type uh, of property, condos versus single families, and by style if that's a, a differentiator in your market of one-story versus two-story homes uh, and so you can start from that now if you later decide that you do want to or, or that there's some obvious geographic lines in your zone that uh, 
you know, you wouldn't cross for getting comparables for the same type of home. So if you, since Validics will already slice it and say it's a 1,300 to 1,500 square foot uh, single story, single family residence, if there's still a highway or a school district boundary, something like that in there that you wouldn't cross, then you'd want to go ahead and set that up and, you know, use the, the GIS, the map tool, uh, to slice it into two zones. You can go back and do that later. Uh, if you start out with just one, which is what I was doing, and at least for our market out here, what seems to work pretty well. So we'll put in a market name because right now it's blank for everything, and we'll just call it uh, CA630, which is a zone number, and main. Oops. Uh, thank you, Jeff. Uh, no audio. Sorry about that. I think when I muted everybody, uh, I muted myself, so uh, apologize for that. Um, and I'm not sure, I'll, I'll rewind here a bit. Uh, I was talking about the layout here on the ready tool, uh, that the top line here is going to show us the, uh, the file name that we brought in, and when we make changes, that's going to go here at the the bottom it'll it'll save it and I was saying that the uh, okay here we go Jeff I'm gonna go ahead and okay uh, Jeffrey Hall I muted you and so if if you need to chat go ahead and, and type that in uh, so when you make changes to your XML file I recommend that you save it with a new name right away uh, that way, if you later discover you've made a mistake, you can go back and start over again from the raw or the original file. And so I was talking about uh, this issue of market name and uh, what we did here because we've got a fairly homogeneous zone was just start with one market name and then let Validics do the slicing and dicing if you will so it will automatically slice it by those size ranges so you'll have you know 1300 to 1500 square feet it will slice it by the uh, style so it's uh, or by type uh, single family versus condos and by style if that's a, a value factor in your market of one story versus two story uh, so it'll automatically group them and, and create market groups that way. If there are some geographic boundaries that you wouldn't cross, so if you were looking at appraising a, uh, a 1,300 to 1,500 square foot single family residence and there's a highway or school district boundary where you, you normally wouldn't want to go across that, then you can go ahead and draw that in with the, uh, the GIS with the map tool. Uh, and you can go back and do that. You can clear out this market name uh, with the ready tool the same way I put it in and as long as your market name is empty when you go in and draw with the GIS tool it'll take all those properties and put it in the market name that you decide so uh, you can do that in either order in terms of drawing it first or doing this rough scoring we'll go ahead and do the rough scoring and uh, and put a single name here for the the market name for all the properties and just let Validics do its automatic slicing and dicing. So I'm just using the the zone number CA630 main here. And up here in the upper right, this editing section, this is actually where we'll make the changes. Over here on the left at the top is how we will filter or narrow down the number of those properties that we're going to work on and down here at the bottom is a display so we can see the properties that are filtered and all the different uh, validics fields that are in there that we can can look at and compare and make sure we're you know working on the properties that, that we intend to so when we start out uh, the the zone XML file has 8781 records and we're working on all of them right now here we can see that in the filtered rows and so we're going to want to do that we'll put in this market name for all 8,000 of them and this is the power of the ready tool it makes it really quick to use it so we'll click the editing box 
and click apply editing it will give us a prompt to say are you sure you want to update this for all the records we'll say yes now the first time we make a change to our XML file it'll give us this warning you've made changes but no output file has been provided yet so what I recommend is right away the first time you do it let's go ahead and create the name of the new file that we're going to save and then each time thereafter when we hit apply editing it'll automatically save it and update that file so I'll say OK and it'll bring us back to this standard kind of Windows navigation box that you will want to be familiar with so you'll come up here or I'm putting it on the desktop in the folder that's called training here we go and so now I'll save this and I'll call this is uh, CA630 modified and we can put the date if we want and it doesn't matter what you call it just so you can keep track so now I'll hit save okay and then you can see down here at the bottom it's showing me the uh, the path for where I'm saving it and so now all the changes we make will be written to this file uh, here and then that's the one that we'll compress or zip up and load back into Validix when we're all done with this and so uh, we've changed the the market name and then I'll just hop back over here and show you where we're at in the uh, in the training document so that was my s oh so you're saying that you uh, you say we're done with this zone and you went to browse and load another zone and then w what happened to your first zone it saved it down here uh, or it saved the second zone into the same file great I'm glad you told me that Todd I mean I the the reality of this ready tool is it's very powerful it was done by a software developer somewhere who didn't create any kind of documentation and you know didn't put in a lot of the the niceties or normal kinds of things you'll see in a you know in a full-blown application and so things like that will get you yep okay so good point so uh, one zone at a time and when you're done you click done and close and and start over again so uh, let's see so we're at step five so I we put in a market name for all the properties and we save the file here that's number six and so now we'll go through and work on these seven uh, rating fields the basement condition extras location parking site size and view uh, what I say here is a, an important concept as you're going through and scoring the zone uh, whether I start out with a one as we did for basement and extras and then build up from there up to ten for the the best basement or the most extras or we start with five which is kind of an average that we assume everything's at and then move up and down from there the the thing that's going to impact the values that Validix predicts is the difference so when you differentiate between your different properties that's where you're going to get the impact so I'm saying the difference between a 1 and a 3 is the same as the difference between a 5 and a 7 in terms of the adjustments that Validix makes for you it's two steps on a 10 step scale so if you have that particular factor say that it's location set at a hundred thousand dollars in Validix then each step is going to be worth ten thousand bucks and so that's how the tool works and what you want to be thinking about as you're deciding on how to score each of those and so uh, here we started with uh, this scheme of putting a one in for basement and extras so we'll do that and then a five for the rest so let's uh, hop back over to the ready tool and start there now again we're going to be working on all the properties so we won't do any filtering we'll it, we've got all 8781 uh, selected and that's where we'll work we're going to go up here uh, but let me show you down here in this results table uh, how we can double check things so let's 
go over here to uh, to basement rating. Uh, and again, I talked about how this is kind of a rough tool. Uh, you know, these things aren't in alphabetical order. It's just kind of however it's written in the database right now. Uh, so we'll scroll across here. Here's basement rating. They're all zeros right now. We're going to want to go up here, and here we've got it alphabetically. So we'll choose basement rating. And we're going to put those as a 1. And so we'll type a 1 in here click this box and now the apply editing button is there we'll click apply editing it'll still prompt us to say are you sure you want to change it we'll say yes and you see here this column now instead of zeros it's all ones in the basement rating uh, I'll do the same thing here for extras which you can see behind the the dialog box there are zeros and now they change to ones and then we'll go through for the rest of the uh, the rating fields condition rating we'll put that at a five apply the editing and location rating still set at five so that one's done parking rating site size now site size we're going to go back in right away and use the template function to change so we don't have to do this but just to kind of make it simple I, I just uh, put it in there that we'll go through and and get the default value in everything and then view rating is the last one. All right, so now that quickly we've put in those seven required uh, rating fields for Validix and updated them because uh, the Validix won't score a property if it's set at zero. And so we've we've got those uh, kind of our, our rough pass uh, scored there. And so that was step seven in my document. And so now we'll talk about style and type. Uh, this is where it's going to be market specific, and you're going to need to look at what you're working with. Here in California, the one story versus two story isn't collected by the assessor, and so we don't have it uh, in our data. And so uh, it's not one we can use. Uh, other markets may have it or it may be important and and you can look at using it uh, but for us out here uh, we weren't so I'm, I'm going to show you how we'll change that now. Uh, we'll go here to style. Now you'll see this changed instead of a freeform text box it's got another drop down and this is a case where uh, the Validix database only has certain allowed values and so uh, it shows you those here and you can choose. Uh, initially when we got some of our zones it had one story. I had recommended just putting in unique because we don't know and on some of the reports that Validix will spit out uh, it may put this in there and so it's not going to look good if we're calling an obviously two-story home a one-story so I said uh, we can live with this and we'll just put style as unique and apply editing and there we go now for type uh, this is where uh, you again you can get into what your assessor has fares that we get our data from matches all the uh, various assessors data to this universal land use code and so you can see here this number after each of these values so it's saying for those 8,781 properties 3,365 of them are called condominiums mobile home lots single family and type unknown and so we'll use this uh, I think there's also a uh, county code 
but that's not used here and county land use uh, that we could look up but uh, as you can see I think that's what FAIRS has already done here you see this code 67 there's 672 properties I'm sure if I looked that up that would be a, a mobile home lot uh, and similarly this is probably pretty close to the condos but uh, again, in your location, there may be some information in the uh, in the fares data that you can use in the ready tool to help you uh, fill in this type field. And let's look at the values here in type. So there's a lot of them. All these that start with C, that means commercial, and then underneath that, residential. So the first time you bring it over, if you've got... Uh, a bunch of commercial type properties, multifamilies, things that, that we won't be able to use the Validix tool for. You'll want to put them all in a single type so that Validix doesn't create a whole bunch of market groups based on a whole bunch of commercial codes. And so we had used C other. And so let's say that I decide I'm going to put mobile home lots. I know it's not commercial, but we're, we're just going to say these are things that we're not going to worry about scoring in Validix. And this type unknown that I think tends to be, you know, raw land or a few kind of cats and dogs that aren't really single families. Say that I want to put all of those into this type of C other. And I'll say again, uh, because this universal land use code is still there, if we later decide, oops, I didn't want to do that, or maybe there's some residential stuff in here, we can come back into the ready tool in the same way and uh, and clean that up. But for now, we'll do this. We'll use the commercial other for all of these that are mobile home lots and type unknown. Now, here's where we have to do the filtering step. We haven't done it prior to this point because we've been working on all... 8,781 rows, but here we only want to work on 722. So I've got these two selected, and these three boxes up here all work the same way. So I could use any of these, and this allows you to logically do ands. So it means I can select these two if I also and want those that are in, in one of these uh, county land use codes, I can select that and use this one over here. If I don't, th they aren't in play. Uh, over here on the left, you can see there's another way to do this. If you want to search by year built living area or lot square footage, you can set up these ranges. Uh, the drop downs have all the values in there, so you can uh, choose from what, what's actually in your XML file. So f for me, for this exercise, we're going to just use uh, the uh, the type of commercial other for these two and so I'm going to hit apply filters and let's watch what happens this number of filtered rows changed to 722 which is what we expected down here in the table there'll be 722 records that we can look at you can see our universal land use code here uh, over here, although I don't really use this table much, I just kind of use it as a sanity check. But if you want to, you can have you can say how many rows it displays at a time and between what what range for all your properties in the uh, in the XML file. So that's just a way to control what displays here. But uh, as I said, what I'm looking at is this filtered rows each time to make sure I'm working on the right number of properties. And so I've got my 722 filtered and so now I'm going to click the editing box and apply editing and that will put the uh, C other in for the the type on all those. And let's see where's type on our output here. So all those are C other. So now I'm going to go work on these other ones. Uh, if I want to go back here and clear those. Now if there's nothing selected and I hit apply filters, it's going to bring back all 8,781. Uh, at the top here it's C other. Uh, and you can see as I scroll down over here on the right, here's one that's blank. Uh, it's already got some 
that are coded as uh, single family detached. Uh, so now I'm going to take all of them that are coded as single family, 4,694, and change the type on those. So I select it here and I hit Apply Filters, and then there's our filtered rows. That number matches. And now for type, I'll go down here to Residential, Single Family Detached, and then click the Editing button, Apply Editing, and those are updated like that. And so now that just leaves me with condominiums. I'm going to click this and click that. Uh, you don't have to do the clear filters, apply filters every time. Uh, if I hit apply filters here, it goes back and selects all 3,365 of those. Uh, right now, we don't know if these are stacked condos, side-by-side -side townhomes. Uh, we may need to go through and clean that up later, but again, this first pass with the Ready tool is working with what we know, what we're able to discern from the, the data that's in there. And so uh, here locally, we're just using this uh, condo, townhouse, row house classification. And click this and hit Apply Editing and those are all changed. Now these drop downs here I can use as well to uh, do a double check. I don't have to use a table. So I selected type and so this tells me now for all my uh, 8,781 records uh, I've got 722 classified as other uh, you can see again a limitation of the tool. It cuts off this number, but 3,300 is condos and 4,600 as single families. There's none that are blank, so that's good. That tells me I've updated everything. And so now I know I'm good to go with that. Uh, in my training document, I had a had a zone that was a little more complex, and that's step nine where I say this is the most complex. Uh, and my little green lines here say I took those four and mapped it to see special purpose or see other. Again, it's just a single one within the, the commercial. And then the condos into that uh, condo townhouse row house and the single families into the single family one. And I've got the little screenshot where I, again, walk through ABC exactly how to select it make the changes. And so uh, you can use this for reference uh, the next time you go through uh, using the Ready tool. And so now we'll go into using the filters. So we'll pop back over here, clear all filters, and apply filters. Okay. So the, the templates, uh, if you haven't seen it before, is another real powerful feature of the Ready tool here. It will do like a statistical analysis and suggest how to uh, score uh, for a couple of those rating factors. So let me show you what I mean by that. So we'll click Define Templates here. And so then it brings up this screen and you see there's tabs across the top here. Uh, the first several are working, the others aren't implemented yet. Uh, extra view and market name. Let's start with site size to see how this works. <clears throat> what it's done is taken all the records, done some statistical stuff here. It says here's the mean, median mode, total records, uh, and you know 100 percent is kind of right in the middle. Uh, it creates this little histogram here to say you know this is the number of properties that I'm suggesting you score as a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And, and what's shown here is displayed in this table in the middle. And so what this is saying is uh, the tool is suggesting that we give a score of 1 for all the properties that have a site size of 435 to 1462, that's 628 properties, uh, a 2 to the properties in this range and the count, and so on all the way down. So now 
you may say, oops, I've got condos in there and some of those mobile home lots, and that's really not uh, applicable here if, if I'm doing this site size adjustment. That really only applies to single family residences. So let's say we don't want to be working on all 8,781. What we really want to work on is just the single family detached where the site size is going to make a difference. The condos and the others, we'll just leave those as five. So now let's uh, apply the filter so we're only working on these 4,694 records. And so now we'll go ahead and click Define Template. Okay, so now it looks a little bit different. You can see the total records are 4,694. Uh, now over here you see this uh, load. So we can, we can say, I don't like the way this is scored. I want to set something up that's more applicable for my neighborhood. And once you put in these values, you can save that and then reuse it. Uh, and I've done that, and I'll show you how that works. But to start with, say I, I said, no, you know, this, uh, this 15, that's not enough. I really, for the low end for my 1s, I want this to go up to 2200. So I can just go in here and type 2200 there. Obviously, the next one in the step would have to be 2201. And I could keep doing that. So we had 15 in there before. If I hit refresh, you can see that jumped to 26. And so I can go through and tune this up and say, you know, I want it to be kind of a, a normal distribution, and most of them get a 5 here. And once I'm happy with all that, I'll click Assign Rating. Uh, and if I like the way I did it, I can save it as a template. I've got one here that I'm going to click Load. Uh, I did it for zone 632 site size, and I'll say OK. And you can see that brought in some new values here, uh, and we can refresh that. Oh, it already did here. Uh, and so it changed it to where it looks a little more the way I think it, it should look for score in this zone. Uh, so I'm happy with that. So I will say assign rating. And so now for all these that aren't a 5, those are going to be changed uh, in my XML file. So I can go back here, and again, if we just want to, uh, to do a double check, there's my site size rating column, some 5s, 7s, 4s, so sure enough, it did what we wanted. And so uh, we can look at the next template for condition and here the the tool tries to use the year built information to allow you to estimate the remaining economic life the condition score and you can put in a comment if you want and so I've got this also uh, written up in my little document here. Uh, we talked about the, the site size and going through that. Uh, and then we'll go down here for condition. Um, and you can see here kind of what I did. For this market, here's my assumptions. I'm saying that everything that was built before 1940 will assume, because we don't know otherwise, that it's got 40 years of remaining economic life and we'll give that a 4. And then I kind of sliced it roughly by decades uh, here and said, okay, I'll move that up and call that 45 remaining economic life and give that a 4, uh, and, and so on, up up the, the, uh, the range here. I think where this really is powerful and we can rely on it are, are the, is a fairly recent construction. So we can say, okay, if it was done in the last decade or whatever is appropriate for our market, we can give that a 10. You know, if it's more than 10 years old, it's probably not going to be uh, in as good a condition uh, and we can go down to a 9 to an 8. Uh, you know, as you get older and you don't know about the remodeling, this becomes less reliable. Uh, out here in California, there was the Title 24 changes for energy efficiency that happened between 77 and 78, so I make that a, a break point. But again, for your local market, you can decide what makes sense and fill these in. Uh, put a comment in there as well if you want. And 
So I think I've actually got that set up as well as a template. And so let me see. Yeah, so condition, single family. Okay, so I loaded uh, my template here and say I like that. All right, then I'll hit assign rating. And then just like that, it, uh, it assigned it. Uh, I think the empty cell warning there was about comments. Uh, you can put in a comment if you want. I didn't do it here. Uh, and so those are the, the numeric ones uh, that you can use with the template. With parking here, it's showing you what are the current uh, comments that are in there from the fares data. Uh, you can see out here the majority say type unknown, so there's not a lot we can work with. But in your market, if you've got information or if you can go through and you know set up comments or update the comments in here, you can use this for parking. Same way for basement. Uh, and I guess potentially in the future, uh, extras and views. So uh, that's how the, the tool works, where you're able to uh, use a, a numeric value or even a text value and assign scores and automatically apply those to, to the properties in the zone. So um, yeah, so that takes me through what I wanted to, to walk through on the, the ready tool. So let me stop again and ask if anybody's got uh, questions or comments, you know, based on your own experience, if you've used the ready tool or any other questions about, uh, about what I've shown or what we're doing here. Um, my zones, not so much. Uh, another of our zone owners here, uh, has that the these pocket developments um, and so again I think it's it's going to be market specific uh, it, you can certainly um, you know adjust the impact of condition and you know you could make uh, condition a million dollars total where each step is going to be you know a hundred thousand if you wanted to uh, if that would capture the effect. So you, you can do that kind of tuning, uh, or as you said, you could potentially carve out the, uh, the pockets that, uh, that have been redeveloped. Um, there's one neighborhood where, you know, all the older homes that are turning into teardowns are about uh, 1,100 square feet, and the new ones that are going in are over 2,000. And so Validix is going to take care of that for us automatically because it's going to put all those in a different market group. It'll be in the 2,000 square foot and up, uh, where I think in, in that particular neighborhood, uh, it'll take care of itself because of the, the size difference for the newer homes. But it, if this is like a, a pocket that was undeveloped and the stuff that's put in there is about the same size as the surrounding ones, uh, then I think you're right. The the only ways to approach that are either a condition adjustment if you keep it in the same market group or to go in and if you've got enough pockets uh, carve them out you know so that if you have a a couple hundred homes of of the newer infill developments you could you could manage them as a separate market group yeah yep okay so any other questions here as we're going through this? Okay, so let me go ahead and then uh, walk through what it's going to look like uh, once we're done. And again, we'll click Done here. Each time we've made changes, it's been written to this file. And so we'll click here, and that will finish it off. Uh, and now we'll go back and get ready to zip it up and put it back into Validix. And so uh, here we are. I'll click Date Modified and 9.59. So that's the last time we updated this one. So this is this is our file that we're going to upload. And so now we need to, to zip that up. Uh, now this one is just the standard Windows 7 functionality. I right click here 
and there's this send to I've got some other kind of things that I installed myself but they'll always have a send to and this compressed or zip folder at the top so we'll click that and that just created a, a zip folder here and you can see the the reason they're doing that from 8 megabytes here it went down to 283k and so that's the file that will upload back into uh, Validix. I won't do it today because this is just a test zone but let me show you how that uh, how that looks here. So we go back into Validix and we're at this import export and now we're going to do import. So we click on this tab and the the interface here says you can drag files or uh, the little button here you can add files and so if you click this again it just brings you to the normal kind of uh, Windows um, navigation and so excuse me just a moment navigate here choose my zip file it puts it here and then we click start upload and so then that would upload it back into Validix um, if I decided I don't want to I can click this red button here and take it out or if I've worked on two or three zones I can actually uh, put several of them here and just upload it all at once uh, once I click the start upload it will uh, pull it into Validix and assuming there's no problems it will give you a little green uh, successfully imported uh, status uh, message here and then you can click on this status link and that will show you uh, the progress and so you'll see it say XML scoring you know 200 of 14,981 done and you can see here kind of the uh, amount of time the the new servers are going faster so while 15 minutes used to be kind of the the maximum you know now I'm seeing it uh, six or seven on some of the new zones uh, one thing to note though if other zone owners have also uh, uploaded zones it, it may not start for a while so I've seen it where it's been a couple hours before it's uh, processed these but once it's done then that will all be back into Validix and you can go into that uh, that market and search and you'll see uh, you know all your properties with the name you gave and the, the number of properties and so on that are, are shown in there so uh, let me hop back over here to the uh, the training document and again I uh, did some screenshots there to walk through this uh, a screenshot of how it's going to look in terms of the status message <clears throat> and then the, the next part we talked about that I showed earlier yeah yeah that's correct so you can pull it down uh, you make changes now the things that are already in there like the uh, the predicted values those kind of things uh, won't change the the uh, the the mapping that you've done won't change so if you decide you know like I was talking about uh, maybe you're gonna change your default scoring or you want to to carve out some subset of properties and give them a new market name you can do that uh, after the fact so you can continue to use the the ready tool yep, yep. I, I think the uh, you know as a kind of a overview um, once you create a new market name then Validix will start fresh with those properties and so it will uh, you know create all the uh, the individual uh, market groups and you'll need to go back and, and recombine those and so uh, in my document I've got some more detail on that that combining into the primary uh, secondary and we talked a little bit about uh, after you've done the combining then it's actually going in and, and balancing uh, and I've got that uh, in here as well so I think at this point for the uh, for the session today I you know I wanted to make sure we covered the ready tool uh, and you know we've touched on the other pieces but uh, I didn't intend to, to go any further so let me just ask again if there's anything else that uh, that folks would like me to cover uh, 
you know in terms of wrap up and then uh, then if not we'll just wrap it up for today and and I can uh, you know respond to emails as well or, or do any kind of one-on-one -on -one help after this